I don't want you to go home. Ask David, what's going on? The preacher told me, you ain't my dad. It says, all who knows that God is their daddy have a true love for Jesus Christ and esteem of his person. A great sense of his love, a sincere affection to his cause and kingdom, a complacency in the salvation passed out by him, and in the method and terms of it, and care to keep his commandments, which is the surest evidence of our love to him. We are in a state of probation. Upon trial, how we will conduct ourselves. in the state of retribution. Uh, We're going to go into the word. Verse 42 it says, Jesus said to them, if God were your father, you would love me and respect me and welcome me gladly. For I proceed from God out of his very presence. I did not even come on my own authority of my own accord, but he sent me. Jesus is saying to you, saints, he said, if you really knew if you really knew who your daddy was, you would love and respect me and welcome me with open arms, no matter what. He said, I came from out of his very presence. He said, if you really, really knew who your daddy was, you would not treat me the way you treat me. He said, you would love me more than you love yourself. He said, you would love me more than you love your clothes. He said, you will love me more than you love your car. He said, you will love me more than you love your money. He said, you will love me more than you love your bling bling, more than you love your father and your mother, if you really knew who your daddy was. All right, man. He said, if you really knew who your daddy was, you would love me unconditionally with all your heart your entire mind and all your soul. He said, if you really knew that I came from your dad. He said, see, this thing has got me confused. He said, you acting like you don't even know me. He said, you're acting up and you're treating me so bad. He, he, he said, the thing about it is, he says, you treat me like this. He said, I don't even want to be here. He said, I was fine. I was good. I was content where I was. Because I knew that if I came, that you would not welcome me because I was different. Because see, I knew I couldn't talk to you because you would look down on me because I came from the streets and you thought you was up here. So you wouldn't talk to me. I knew. I needed some help, but I knew I couldn't come talk to you because I had a little alcohol in my breath and you wouldn't listen to me. You would look at me different. I knew. I knew I couldn't come talk to you. I knew because I looked and acted a little different. I didn't talk the way you wanted me to talk. I knew I was different. I'm just a country boy. I know I talk different, but I'm content with that. But I knew you wouldn't talk to me. That you wouldn't welcome me. You wouldn't give me any kind of love because I was different. Jesus dad said, I did not come on my own doing. He said, I was sent by my dad because you had a need. You needed to be redeemed. He said, I was sent by my dad because I needed to send some light on your door. He said, I was sent by my dad. He said, I was not sent on my own one call. I was sent here to St. Paul because I had some needs. I had some issues. I had some problems going on in my life. So he sent me here to St. Paul because he knew that you could address those issues. I did not want to come to St. Paul. I thought like everybody else, they too ugly for me. <laughs> but I was sick because I had some issues and some
to me. The pastor, he didn't want to come to St. Paul. He was fine. But he was sick. Because St. Paul had some need. I know you thought that everything was okay. I know you thought everything was fine. That y'all were doing just good. Even when the change came down, some of you were upset. Some of you were mad. Some of you that left the church. But I'm telling you, he was sick by his He said he does not 
can't be the head, you have to be the tail. It's a lie. He's a, it said he's a liar and the father of it. He's a gospel and the father of it. He says he looks to deceive you and he's the father of it. He is, he is very good. He said he's very good at it. He's good at what he does. He's the master of it. He's the master of deception. He said, so you got to listen to me. He said, I'm trying to tell you the truth. He said, I didn't want to come. He said, but I'm coming to tell you the truth because my daddy sent me. He said, but because I speak the truth, you do not believe me, nor do you trust me. You do not rely on me, or do you do not adhere to my words. Jesus said it because I tell you the truth. Yes. You do not believe me. Have you ever been around someone who would just rather for you to lie to them than tell the truth? Amen. Jesus said, I'm trying to tell you right from wrong, but you do not believe me. He says, I'm trying to tell you that your daddy sent me to help you. Your daddy sent me to give you a second chance in life. All right. He says, I don't want to be here. He says, your daddy sent me. <coughs> your daddy. He said, but if you knew that your daddy sent me and who your daddy was, that you would love me and accept me. He said, I'm trying to tell you if you would just put your trust in me I will lead you down the path of righteousness. He said, I'm trying to tell you, if you just put your trust in me, that I will open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that you shall not receive, that you shall receive. Amen. But you do not believe me. He said, I'm going on and on. He said, I'm trying to get you to understand that I'm here for you. Not for me. I'm trying to get you to understand that I love you more than he loves you. He said, I'm trying to get you to believe me. Only in verse 26 he goes, he said, who have you convicted of wrongdoing? He said, or finds me guilty of sin. He said, then if I speak the truth, why do you not believe me? Trust me, rely on, and adhere to my word. He says, which one of you finds me guilty of sin? He said, which one of you finds me guilty of sin? He said, if so, speak now or forever hold your peace. He says, speak now or forever hold your peace. Amen. See, Jesus was so committed. He was so committed to God's word and God's will that no matter what convictions came over him, they could not connect him to sin. Jesus was so committed. So we as saints, we have to be so committed to God's word that no matter what comes upon us, that it cannot separate us from the will of God. We have to be so committed to one of God's commandments that it cannot separate us from the will of God. I know it's going to be some obstacles, but you have to just step over and keep your eye on the prize. I know it's going to be some situations, but you have to just step up and keep your eye on the prize. He said that I tell, I turn your enemies into footstool. So I mean, you will stand on top and you look down on it. He said, I rely on my dad. You have to trust in God's will. You have to trust in God's commandment. You have to adhere to his word. Adhere means to stick to or support a stick to like glue. Amen. Amen. For four or five years, I've been sticking back to this man here. Every time they threw him out, I suck back. Every time they threw him out, I suck back. Everywhere he walked, I walk. I was just like his shadow. Everywhere he went, I went. When they meant to run, they seemed tight. When they meant somebody to open the door, I was there opening the door. You have to stick to God's commandments. I stuck to him like goo. So every time anything was going on, would you try to convict him? I had a witness. I had a witness. 
He says, I'm trying to tell you how, how, how to get past this thing. He said, I'm trying to tell you how to get over that obstacle. He said, but if you, if you do not trust and rely on me, he says, you will die in sin. Amen. He says, I, I, I know they're trying to convict you. He said, but stick to my word. That no weapon formed against you shall prosper. Amen. Yeah. He said, I know. He said, I know, so it's okay. I know, daughter, it's okay. He said, I know. It's some folk out there that's not for you. But he said, stick to my word. Amen. He said, if Amen. I'm for you, yeah. then who can be against you? He said, if I'm for you, then who can be against you? He said, listen to me. He said, I'm trying to tell you something. He said, I'm trying to explain some things to you. He said, I'm trying to get you to understand that I love you more than life itself. He said, I don't judge you. He said, I accept you for who you are. He said, I, I, he said, I got to get the point across to you. He said, I speak the truth. He said, I'm coming and said, I'm trying to tell you something. He said, but you got to stick to my word. Adhere to my commandments. Listen and follow with me. In verse 47, he says, whosoever is of God listens to God. He said, those who belong to God hear the words of God. He said, this is the reason you do not listen. To them, to my words, or to me. He says, because you do not belong to me, and not of God or in harmony with God. Amen. He says, if you say you love God yes. and hear his word, you will listen. Because all my children, he says, all my children, hears me and listens to what I have to tell them. He said, a person who knows God, hears his knock and opens immediately. He said, it's just like the sheep. He says, the sheep know the voice of the shepherd from that of a stranger. He said, I'm trying to get you to understand that you need to listen to me. You need to adhere to my word. He says, I'm trying to tell you something. He said, but you're just so hard in it. He's talking to these people. He's talking to them over and over again. He says, he said, but this, this is the reason that you do not listen to me. He said, because you do not belong to me. He says, you do not listen to me because you do not belong to me. He says, you are not my child. He says, you are a child of your dad, which is the devil. He said, see, in order to hear from God, he said, you have to love him and be on one accord with him. You have to trust in him and adhere to his commandments. He says, if you love me and trust me and rely on me, he says, I will bring you out of the house of bondage. He said, I will bring you out of every situation that you thought was too hard for you to get out of. He said, I'm speaking to my people. And when Jesus was speaking to his people, he had a snarl. He was speaking, speaking with authority because he was trying to get you to understand. He says, I'm trying to get you to understand that I'm here for you. I'm trying to get you to understand that who you think your daddy is not your daddy. He says, I'm going to get you to understand and to know when you 
telling them to shake it, daddy? <laughs> you know who is which daddy you telling to shake it? Right. Right. He said, I'm trying to get you to understand. He goes on, he, 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 you know, it got me. So I, I remember stories. He, there, 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 was a, there was this young boy. He, he, he was born to a great mother. But he did not know who his daddy was. He had a stepfather who he loved to death, but it was just something missing. And there was a void because the boy felt lost. He felt lost and he did not know who his daddy was. His daddy and why his daddy didn't love him. For years and years, this boy, now a grown man, was still wondering who his daddy was. But why he was not around, he started praying and praying every night. But he did not get a response. So early, early, one Sunday morning, he decided to go to church. And while he was there, he liked the feeling. He decided to go to church. And while he was there, he liked the feeling. So he started going on a regular basis. Then one day, one day, he heard a voice. He heard a voice calling, saying, Son, Son, it's time. It's time to go home and meet your daddy. It's time to go home and meet your daddy. So he answered. But all, he also found out that his daddy had been there all along. His daddy was knocking and knocking and knocking and knocking. All he had to do was answer. So for the past few years, this little boy, who is now a man, has been with his daddy. His daddy has been blessing him over and over again. His daddy has been blessing him over and over again. Blessing was just raining, raining down on him. He was so excited. He was so excited. He was so excited. He, so excited. he started to shout.
question. I have a question. I have a question. I have a question. I have a question. On the TV shows, they they have women come out and men come out and and and, and women have said that an unborn child that's inside of them or or, or, or a child that's already born that could be 2, 5, 10, 15 years old. They say he's the dad. And the man is just not sure. And so they have a paternity test. Today we're going to do a quick paternity test. Ah, we're going to do a quick paternity test. And, 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 and on the show, when, when, they find, when they find out, when the child finds out that the person that they thought was their daddy is not their daddy, they say they, 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 they both run out the room and, and run back into the back. Today I don't want anybody to run out the room and right. find out All right, sir. that Jehovah is not your daddy. But I want you to run down to this altar because he can supernaturally Let's do this test real quick. Let's do this quick paternity test. I don't want you to be so proud to where you leave here with the wrong daddy today. We're going to do a quick paternity test. And if you find out in this paternity test that who you thought was your daddy is not really your daddy, that Jehovah, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, is not really your daddy, I want you to step out from out your seat and I want you to come down here because we're going to do a supernatural conception today. And the one that was not your daddy, today can be your daddy. And so here's the test, here's the test, here's the test. And I want you to be real, I want you to be real. The test has just come back. And the child, the, the woman, the man, the boy, the girl, the one that has called themselves a saint, the test has just come back and the test says when I when I look at the characteristics of your life and if the characteristics are sin well. that God's been telling you to do a certain thing but you have not conformed and been obedient to the thing that God has been telling you to do the test have just come back. Satan is your dad. If God has been calling and calling and calling, but there's something that's in the world that, 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 that has its claws in your skin and, and has you in the midst of fornication, that's having sex with someone that you're not married to, that has you in the midst of lying and deception that's telling a falsehood and not being real about the words that you're speaking out of your mouth. Has you caught up in gossip and, and hatred and unforgiveness? The test results say that your dad's name is Lucifer. What, 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 uh, there's another report. There's another report. I've just received a report from Jesus. Hallelujah. It said that Lucifer was not your original father. That somewhere along the line he put his hands around you and made you feel like he, he loved you and and you followed him and, and you get caught in a, thing, a lot of things that you're not proud of. But he was not your original father when we go back to conception. Yes. It was the Lord our creator that looked down into nothing. Well. Put a little water on a little dust and uh -huh. mixed it all together. He was still out there nothing. What even was not even a thought in your parents' mind. Not even formed in your mother's womb. And he began to take nothing rubbish mess. And he began 
begin to take you and he begin to, to shape you and, and to mold you and, and to make you that you may. He took a man and a woman that, that didn't even know what he was doing. Didn't even know the extent of what he was doing and he, he brought them together but then he when he brought them together he took this thing that he had formed and called great called miraculous this thing that he had formed and, and said would be the head and not the tail this this being that he would form this lifeless being he took you and placed you in your mother's womb into your lungs and you begin to form and you be before Lucifer ever deceived you into thinking your father That's good. had taken you from nothing yes. and called you something and today he's simply calling you back yes. to your real death your spiritual You want to come back today? Come and kneel at this altar, and we'll we'll remove the hands of the deceptive and the the daddy that's not really a part of who you are, and we'll reconnect you with your real dad. Anybody want to be reconnected today? Come and kneel at the altar. The altar is open. Come now. You want to be reconnected. You found out through the paternity test that you really had lost sight of who your daddy was. But today, you're ready to be reconnected. Come and deal at the altar. You may want to give your life for the first time. You may want to recommit your life. Or you may need a church home. Whatever the reason is, come and kneel now at the altar. We offer Christ. We offer Christ. Thank you, Lord. We offer Christ. We offer Christ. This is your opportunity to come now. Come now. Come now. Yes, yes, we offer Christ. We offer Christ. Is that someone else? 